we want to solve the equation cotangent theta equals square root three and the equation cotangent theta equals a negative square root three divided by three on the interval from zero to two pi radians. We want to solve these equations without a calculator, which means we'll be using reference triangles in the unit circle. So looking at our first equation, cotangent theta equals square root three, let's begin by determining in which quadrants the cotangent function value is positive. Remember, cotangent theta is equal to x divided by y, or in a right triangle, the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side. Well, we know all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant, where both x and y are positive, but x divided by y would also be positive in the third quadrant, where both coordinates are negative. And now looking at our equation, cotangent theta equals square root three, Let's write this as cotangent theta equals square root three divided by one. If we wanted to, we could write this as tangent theta equals one divided by square root three, since cotangent and tangent are reciprocals of one another. But let's go ahead and leave it in this form. And when we think about a right triangle, where the adjacent side and opposite side would be labeled square root three and one, this should remind us of a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle which we see here. If we look at the angle of three degrees, or pi over six radians here, notice how the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side would be square root three divided by one. So cotangent of pi over six radians, or three degrees, is equal to, again, the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side, which is square root three, or square root three over one which means if we sketch a three degree reference angle in the first and third quadrants where cotangent is positive, we can determine our solutions on the given interval. So let's go ahead and sketch a three degree reference angle in the first quadrant here. We'll use degrees and then convert to radians. A three degree reference angle in the third quadrant might look something like this. Let's go ahead and sketch the reference triangles as well. And now we'll label the short legs one, the hypotenuse two, and the longer leg square root three. In the first quadrant, everything is positive, but in the third quadrant, both x and y are negative. So the two angles we're looking for over the interval from zero to two pi would be three degrees, and then this angle here which would be 180 plus 30 or 210 degrees. So we have theta equals 30 degrees, which we know is pi over six radians. And our second solution over the given interval would be 210 degrees. Let's convert this to radians. A common factor here of 30, there are six 30s in 180, seven 30s in 210, so we have seven pi over six radians. Let's also see if we can determine these solutions using the unit circle, which means we want to find the points where x divided by y would be equal to square root three. So notice here at pi over six radians, x divided by y would be square root three divided by two divided by one half if we multiplied this by two over two, notice how this would simplify to square root three divided by one or square root three. And then also at seven pi over six radians or 210 degrees, we'd have the same quotient except we'd have a negative divided by a negative, which would still give us positive square root three. Now let's look at our second equation. Now we want to solve the equation cotangent theta equals negative square root three divided by three, again on the interval from zero to two pi. Let's begin by determining where cotangent theta is negative. Remember, cotangent theta is x divided by y, which should be negative in the second quadrant, where x is negative and y is positive, and also in the fourth quadrant, where x is positive and y is negative. Now for the next step, it's going to be hard to identify an angle that has a cotangent function value of negative square root three divided by three. Let's change the form of this by rationalizing the numerator. 
if we have negative square root three divided by three, and we multiply by square root three over square root three, we'd have negative three divided by three square root three, which was simplified to negative one divided by square root three. So let's write our equation as cotangent theta equals negative one divided by square root three. Now let's ignore the sign for a moment and determine an angle that has a cotangent function value of one divided by square root three. Going back to our reference triangles, notice how now if we reference the 60 degree angle, notice cotangent of pi over three radians or 60 degrees would be equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side or one divided by square root three. Which means if we sketch a 60 degree reference angle in the second and fourth quadrants, we can determine the angles that have a cotangent function value of negative one divided by square root three. So we'll sketch a 60 degree reference angle in the second quadrant here, as well as here in the fourth quadrant. So we'll find the solutions in degrees and then convert to radians. Let's go ahead and sketch the reference triangles as well. And let's label the sides. In the second quadrant where x is negative, this would be negative one. In the fourth quadrant where y is negative, this would be negative square root three. So we're looking for the angles that have a cotangent function value of negative one divided by square root three from zero to two pi. So one angle would be this angle here, and the second angle would be this angle here. So in degrees, we'd have theta equals, this would be 90 plus 30 or 120 degrees, and the second angle would be 270 plus 30 or 300 degrees. And now we'll convert to radians. Common factor here of 60, three sixties and 180, two sixties and 120. So we have two pi over three radians. And here we have a common factor of 60 as well, three sixties and 80 and five sixties and 300. So we have five pi over three radians. So these are the two solutions over the given interval. Let's also find these on the unit circle where again, x divided by y would need to be one divided by square root three. Notice that two pi over three radians here, x divided by y would be negative one half divided by square root three divided by two, again multiplying by two over two. Notice how this would simplify to negative one divided by square root three. And also here at five pi over three radians, x divided by y would also be negative one over square root three. That's gonna do it for these two examples. I hope you found this helpful.